This video features the guitar and bass parts that are present during the intro of the song. The tuning used in this video and on the record is standard E in 440 wavelength calibration. The dominant bass guitar part is going to be a riff pattern that's two full measures long. When the riff pattern starts out, we're going to be at rest for the first quarter of the measure. In other words, we got a quarter note rest and we're not going to do anything on one. On two, the pinky will go down on the G string at the 19th fret. We're going to pick that down and allow it to ring out as an eighth note. Then the third finger will go to the same string at the 18th fret. We're going to pick this up and let that ring out as an eighth note. Then the middle finger will go to the 17th fret. We'll pick this down on three and allow that to ring out as an eighth note. Then the first finger will go to the 16th fret on that same string. We'll pick that up on the and beat or up beat directly after three and allow that to ring out as a quarter note. Okay, with a four count lead end, this is what we have so far. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four. Okay, notice I didn't pick on four. I was just counting the downbeat, and I let that last note sustain out over four as a quarter note instead of an eighth note. What we did there was we progressed chromatically from the note on the 19th fret to the note on the 16th fret. What it means to progress chromatically means that you scaled up or down from one note to another by playing every note in between regardless of tone or whether or not it's in cue to music. So your first finger is locked down on the G string at the 16th fret, leave it there. We're going to place the pinky back on the same string at the 19th fret. We're going to pick it down on the end beat directly after 4. And we're going to pull off to the 16th fret, just like this. What this is, is two 16th notes. Only the first note was picked here. The second note was sounded by the pulling off or the snapping off of the pinky, just like this. And a. Okay, I'm not going to pick it. I'm just going to snap the finger off so you can hear what I'm talking about. That's how the second note's produced. With a four count lead in, let's do the first measure. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and a. Just like that. Now we'll start the second measure. What you're going to do is place the middle finger on the D string at the 17th fret. We're going to pick that down on one. We'll go to the 16th fret with the first finger on that same string and pick that up on the and beat directly after one. Both of these are eighth notes. Then we'll place the pinky back down on the G string at the 19th fret. We're going to pick that down on two and allow it to ring out as an eighth note. Then the middle finger will go to the A string at the 17th fret. We're going to pick this up on the and beat directly after two. This is going to ring out as an eighth note. And lastly, We'll place the middle finger on the same string at the 16th fret and pick this down on three. And we'll allow that to ring out for the rest of the measure. And we're going to add a little vibrato to it, which is this. Okay, the vibrato comes from the shaking of the hand and not the shaking of the finger. I'm going with the string and not against it like this. Okay. This is what the second measure is going to sound like with the four count lead in. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, four. All right, with the four count lead in, let's repeat that riff pattern a few times. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and a one, and two, and three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and a one, and two, and three, four, one, two, and three. Four and a one and two and three four one two and three and four and a one and two and three four. Now notice that this last note here. Every time we repeat the riff pattern, once we get to that, that's actually sustaining into the next measure. Instead of resting like we did the very first time we played it, now that note's sustaining out in place of that. 
This uh, riff pattern repeats itself eight times before the music progresses to the next phase. I realized that Cliff Burton played with his fingers. This exercise was done with a pick or a plectrum is called in proper terminology just to illustrate the proper way to use one. There are a lot of players out there who prefer to use a pick. I tried to address both possibilities. This part is also played with distortion on the album. It worked here because the bass part was high pitched, melodic, and doubled by a second guitar. If distortion was always used on bass, the instrument would often clash with the guitars and become lost in the mix. It wouldn't lay down as distinct, solid, and effective a foundation. A second simple bass part is overdubbed as a foundation to free up the dominant bass guitar part to play that melodic lead type part with distortion. What it's going to do is we're going to play the note on the E string at the second fret that's an F sharp. This song is based on triplet timing. We're going to do a couple accents on three and then on four and we're going to let the open E string ring out for a measure and a half. Triplet timings counted one and a two and a. What we're going to do here is pick down and up on a three and. And on the up beat, we're going to release the pressure on the string just to deaden it out and take a triplet rest. So it'll sound like we're doing eighth notes, but we're actually doing triplets. So we're going to do this on three and, just like this, three mm -hmm. and. Now I'm going to release the pressure, three mm -hmm. and, for a rest. Then we'll repeat that on four, four and, four mm -hmm. and. So we'll have three and, four and, and we'll hit the open E string on one. Now this song starts with a four count, well we're going to use a four count lead in and because we're accenting on three and four and what we'll do is we'll extend the lead in by two extra notes on the next measure. So you're going to have a six count lead in essentially. Here we go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three and four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three and four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three and four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three and four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three and four and it repeats that process eight times before the music progresses to the next part of the song. Since it's not possible to play both bass parts at the same time, what we can do is take a piece of the overdub bass part and incorporate it into the main bass part. What we'll do is we'll hit the low open E string on the first beat of the riff pattern and let it ring out as we do the main bass part. This is what you're going to have with the four count lead in. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, one. The bass guitar seems to get all the recognition in this song, and that's because it starts out doing something out of the ordinary. It's playing a melodic lead type part using distortion. What most people fail to notice, including other musicians, is that when you listen to an actual recording of the song closely, there's a second guitar part that doubles the bass part almost note for note, but with a few subtle differences. We're going to start out by placing the pinky on the high E string at the 10th fret. This position is actually one full octave higher in pitch than what the bass guitar is doing. The first four notes we play here will be exactly the same is what the bass is doing. We're going to pick the note on the 10th fret, down on 2, followed by the note on the 9th fret. We're going to pick that upwards on the upbeat after 2. We're going to go to the note on the 8th fret, pick that downwards on 3. Then we'll go to the note on the 7th fret, we'll pick that up on the upbeat directly after 3. We're not going to add the extra lick that the bass is doing there. What we're going to do is we're going to let this last note ring out for the rest of the first measure of the riff. With a four count lead in, this is what we have. 
One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and... Now to start the second measure of the riff, we're going to place the middle finger on the B string at the 8th fret. We're going to pick that down on one, and we'll pull off to the 7th fret, just like this. That'll be count one and. And we'll go back to the note where we started out on, the 10th fret of the high E string. We're going to pick that down on two. This is what we have so far for the second measure of the riff. Just like that, one and two. From there, we're going to put the middle finger on the G string at the 7th fret. You'll pick that upwards, okay? On the upbeat directly after two, followed by the note on the 6th fret of G string. You're going to pick that down on three and let it ring out the rest of the measure. This is what the second measure of the riff is going to sound like. Okay, notice the vibrato. The secret to a good vibrato is to shake your hand with the string. Don't try to go against it. It took me a lot of years to figure this out. The secret to a good vibrato is go with the string and it comes from the shaking of the hand and wrist, not from the finger. The finger is just holding the string in place. So, with a four count lead in, Let's do this riff pattern three or four times. I'm going to count the downbeats even though we're not picking them. One, two, three, four, one, two and three and four, one and two and three, four, one, two and three and four, one and two and three, four, one, two and three and four, one and two and three, four, one, two and three and four, and one, two and three, four. Now notice when we get to this uh, last note of the riff pattern that I'm uh, giving the slight vibrato. Notice that that actually sustains into the next measure. It's actually still ringing on one before we go to pick two. Lastly, what I'd like to point out is during the intro of the song, this riff pattern repeats itself eight times before we progress in the next part of the music. The supporting guitar part is a distorted rhythm part that's going to accent tightly with the overdub bass part. This is going to lay down a foundation for the distorted bass part and the lead parts to work off of. We're going to make an F sharp 5 power chord by placing the first finger on the low E string at the second fret. The third finger will go on the A string at the fourth fret. This creates a perfect fifth interval. And to complete the power chord, we'll place the pinky on the D string at the 4th fret. We're going to accent on the 3 and and 4 and beats, just like the bass guitar. Then we're going to pick the open E5 power chord with the down stroke on 1, and let that sustain out for a measure and a half. With a 4 count lead in, this is what we're going to have. And remember, with a four count lead in, what we're going to do is we'll actually add a couple extra notes on the next measure before coming in on three. This is what I mean. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and. Notice what I'm doing there. When I pick on three and, I'm going down up. And you see me take the, the side of my hand and rest it on the strings to deaden them. What that is, is a triplet rest. The first two notes are triplets. One and, I'm actually resting on the a beat. And then I repeat that on four and. This part's actually going to repeat itself eight times in the intro of the song. With the four count lead in, let's do this a few more times before moving on. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and. I'm also, when I uh, deaden out those strings with the side of my hand, 
I'm also slightly releasing a little pressure on the notes that I'm fretting out. 